And you know how you press record and you thought you was ready? But then you look at yourself in the camera and you be like, oh, wait. Mm, that's, <laughs> is that what I look like today? It's been a minute, but I am actually loving these hair talks, you guys. I am bringing experts to you in their field. I really want you to have all of this information about hair care because we all want this long, gorgeous hair, you know. And y'all, no way before I say that, hey, Bri Bri, hey, girl. She reached out and was like, girl, I'm loving the oil. It's doing right by my hair and my skin. Me too. Today, we are talking to Coach Dana. So, Dana Wilson is a trichologist. Love that. She does virtual services. So, I say everybody should see a trichologist at least once a year just to see the health of your hair, just to know what's going on. And Dana is going to school us. First of all, if you've ever dealt with fibroids, PCOS, endometriosis, it is wonderful to hear her because she is going to be someone that you can actually reach out to and have another conversation, especially if your hair isn't thriving and you are dealing with one of those reproductive diseases because i already got my own fibroid story y'all it's just a thing um she is a loctician she has beautiful sister locks they are gorgeous so if you ever have questions about that i love it because a lot of the um college uh students that i had the opportunity to speak to last year a lot of them um told me that they were going to be doing their side hustles and one of them was doing hair so you can actually become a certified um sister lock technician without having to go to cosmetology school and you could be doing that in the dorm so i absolutely love that what else did i want to tell y'all about dana before oh dana reminded me about um exfoliating the scalp and i was like wait so all that to say y'all tune in go ahead listen to dana and visit curlyhaircrisis.com because i have added a little section where you can find the trichologist in your area now if you know someone that is a trichologist. Please tell them to reach out, send me their information so I can add them. Also, if you know somebody that's a side hustler with hair, tell them that they need to see Coach Dana so they can be amazing for their clients and actually know when they see things because sometimes your stylist is the first person that notices thinning or notice your hair is changing a little bit. Other than that, y'all, I'll see you in my next hair talk. <laughs> Bye, subbies. Thank you so much for joining us in the sub. Yes, you all sub. Guess what? We have an amazing person with us here today. I'm talking about, we are speaking to a wonderful lady who's been in the game over 20 years with hair care. I know it just seems like yesterday when you started. So right. amazing. And, and the wonderful thing about it, not just that she's a certified trichologist. Now we on Curly Hair Crisis. We already know what that is. Yeah. Uh, but she actually has a lot of experience with sister locks. And believe it or not, just yesterday, someone uh, called me and said, you know what? I'm thinking about locking my hair. And I said, oh, hold on. Because <laughs> yeah. I got somebody that you might need to listen to because I can't tell you anything, but I just know it's amazing things happening, especially when you go on that journey. <laughs> well, hi, Subbies. Thank, thank you so much for having me, truly. I, I mean, it's an honor to, to share with other people about what I'm up to and what I do. Um, so thank you so much. I am Dana Wilson. I am a certified trichologist. I am a sister lock trainer, consultant, and coach. <laughs> I am a, co a certified cold capper. And if you don't know what that means, is Right. So a cold capper is someone to help people who are going through chemo and want to save their hair. Oh, wow. I am a bio research assistant. So what that means is I am certified to help with research studies around hair loss and products and such as well. And wow. notice I did not say I was a cosmetologist. So I am not a cosmetologist. So ultimately, I call myself a hair advocate okay. um, mm -hmm. because in my journey really just started with getting my own sister locks. So you're so passionate about this. What yeah. led to your journey of just even before you decided to lock your hair? What happened to make you fall in love with just all of this wonderful information about hair health? So, um, well, first of all, I was in the military. Okay. okay. And so in the Air Force and, you know, you're doing a lot of working out, you're deploying, you got to be ready at any time. Right. So I had the hair woes just like, it, you know, most 
African American women, we had those hair woes. And so I was trying to figure out what to do with my hair um, that, you know, that looked good <laughs> and, and, and manageable. And that's how I ended up with Sister Locks. And then from Sister Locks, get my Sister Locks done, I decided I wanted to be, learn how to do it. Um, just because I experienced so much freedom with it um, that I wanted to share with other people. And then I obviously I became a consultant, never really trying to do it as a business. It was just a really a sharing at first. <laughs> and then I had to learn how to do business <laughs> because it got out of control. Right. Oh. The sharing got out of control. <laughs> we know. But over the years with my clientele, I start seeing hair loss and I could not uh, put it together. Why? Why? I knew that they were coming for their regular appointments. They had a great regimen in regards and regarding shampooing their hair and moisturizing their locks and such. And they were going to see dermatologists and getting different treatments, but it really wasn't working. You know, it worked for temporarily and then go away. Um, then I started losing my hair. Wait a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait. Yes, ma'am. I did. But it wasn't the kind of hair loss that was like coming out in clumps in my hand or in the shower or anything like that. It was just a diminishing of density all overall. Oh. I just started to notice. I'm like, something's going on here. Something looks different. And um, I had a consultant friend of mine who had just told me she was a trichologist. And at the time, I really didn't dove really into it. But when I started losing my hair, I'm like, tell me what you say you did again. <laughs> and so um, obviously, trichology is the study of hair, hair loss and scalp disorders. Mm -hmm. And so I began to talk to her about what was going on. And the first thing she told me to do, go get blood work. Get you a physical and get blood work for your I'm, hair. So yeah, I'm like for a physical and blood work for my hair. I told you my hair is falling out, <laughs> but um, the blood tells you everything. The blood uh -huh. tells you what's going on inside your body. Like, hmm. are you vitamin deficient? It's telling you what's going on with your hormones. Um, I even, I found out that I had fibroids when I went and got that physical, I had tons of fibroids. What does that have to do with hair loss? Well, your fibroids are being fed and grown by blood and every follicle on your head has a blood source to it. Mm. And so if it's feeding something else, then it cannot feed your follicles. Mm. So sometimes for some people, your um, hair is the sacrificial lamb to or an indicator that something's going on internally with you. Wait. So just just a sidebar for fibroids yeah. or PCOS. So like in your case, did you feel like, OK, mm -hmm. you know, my fibroids needed to be taken care of for my hair? Yeah. Look here. Here's our follicle right here mm -hmm. right down into the scalp. Each follicle, it has a blood source to it. OK. And so if your blood is feeding other things, <laughs> then it's possible that it's not being uh, feeding the follicle. So oh. absolutely. It could be so many things. It could be hormonal. It could be fibroids. It could be. um you had a surgery and your body is, you know, out of whack. The blood is being distributed somewhere. It could be you're dehydrated. It could be low vitamin D. It's so many variables here. And it's, it really is a personal situation. So um, there's not one thing. There's not a one stop shop thing that, you know, like, you know, some people go get these miracle drops. Sometimes yes. it works for the person and sometimes it don't because it really depends on why that person was losing the hair. What? So that's what happened to me. I started losing my hair. I went to a trichologist. She broke it down for me. And of course, me being that curious person, I'm like, I need to learn more about this because obviously I wanted to help my clients. Mm. And so that's when I went to trichology school. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wait, so in, in your case, how'd you get your hair back on track? 
<laughs> oh, it was so many. I had to change my diet. Oh, bagel diet. Mm-hmm. I had to change my diet. Um, I had to start drinking more water. I ended up taking care of those fibroids. <laughs> mm. Mm. And it took my body at least six months to a year <sighs> to balance back out where I started mm. in growth. But it was a personal journey to my wellness. And it's it, it continues to be. It's something that um hair loss is not like you recover and we all back to normal. You have to continue to do the things um, to take care of your body to continue to see growth or to diminish the loss that you've um you've seen before. Well, well I hear you say. <laughs> Mm-hmm. This is not a quick fix, especially it's if no we are already fix. thinning. A good trichologist is going to tell you to go get some blood work because she needs to know what's going on internally. Oh. It is not the external. It's 70 percent. They'll tell you 70 percent internal, 30 percent external. Wow. Because there is some uh, like we have traction alopecia. Mm-hmm. Alopecia is usually, you know, around the hairline typically, but obviously yeah anywhere that the hair is being pulled um, excessively in one area. And what it does is um, sometimes it kills the follicle or, or just have the follicle be dormant. Mm, that's from our lace fronts, maybe. And when we get the braids real, real tight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's so what's tra- happening, what's happening here, if you see this, that hair strand is being pulled out of the follicle. So then the po- follicle don't reproduce another one. It's supposed to grow and leave, grow and leave. So mm-hmm. hair loss is a disruption of that life cycle of the hair. And so it decides, okay, it's being pulled so many times in that area that it decides it's not going to produce anymore right there. Wow. So I named the traction. We know that one. Traction yeah. alopecia, that's excessive pulling, right? We have androgenetic alopecia. That is um, the diminishing of the density overall, meaning that the, the strands are becoming thinner and finer. They're dwindling away, okay? Wow. Or it's not producing as much hair, right? Because I told you it go through a cycle. That's the androgenetic alopecia. So that's just where you'll see someone say, oh, it's thinning overall. Then you have CCCA. <laughs> this is a tricky. Central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia. Oh, right. And that one is primarily in Africa. You'll see that in African-American women. Oh. And that is the alopecia that starts typically in the center of the head and spreads out. It is a scarring alopecia meaning that it really kills the follicle and closes it up where it will not produce hair anymore if it's gone too far. Wait a minute, what causes this? What age? What's happening? Because I don't want to. Good question. So here's the fun. Here's the, it's not funny, but here's the interesting thing. We need more research studies for this. Oh, see. Okay. For the most part, African American women, we do a great job with um, compensating, you know, camouflaging, putting that wig on, putting that weave on, and keeping yeah. it moving, or just shave it off and keeping it moving. Um, and we don't handle it, meaning we're not going to the dermatologist or know to go to a trichologist or that there is one. Um, and so they don't get to do the research because they don't have enough people that's coming in with the issue and being willing to be part of research. And so we really need our sisters and brothers to come in so that we can do research on that to find what the commonality is. Um, But it's inflammation, it's like an inflammatory alopecia. So that means that the person has inflammation in their body. Um, those are the common ones that I see. Of course, you have, you know, scalp disorders. People have seborrhea der- dermatitis and ringworm and all that kind of good stuff. But as far as hair loss, traction, androgenetic alopecia, and CCCA are the huge ones in our community. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, again, so that's good to know. Yes. Hubbies. <laughs> that is good to know. But is, is there any other thing? Because, you know, we're all on these healthy hair journeys yeah. that you would say for preventative steps. Yes. We can just keep our hair so healthy, just growing. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that comes to mind? Yes. Scalp hygiene is the first thing to come to mind. Um, because we think about, you know, shampooing your hair, right? But it is the scalp that is the breeding ground for the hair, right? So we need to keep our scalp clean. So just the same way that you do, you know, you wash your face every day, right? Yes. But then at some point you get a facial so that you can get a deep cleanse. Oh. You would do the same thing with your scalp and that's called a scalp exfoliation, You would get a scalp exfoliation where you're focusing just on the scalp, getting those follicles and pores all cleaned out. The same way you would do with your face. Wait a minute. I've never heard of this. Do do I need to go somewhere (laughs) and get this done? (laughs) Wait a minute. Um, Absolutely. You need to be going to get a scalp exfoliation at least every six months for sure, if not more. Mm-hmm. Oh. You got to keep the scalp clean. And then, of course, shampooing your hair, because typically if you shampoo your hair, you're getting some on the scalp. But a scalp exfoliation is specifically just for the scalp and getting all that debris wow. off and like a deep cleanse of the scalp so that the scalp is in the optimum way to produce mm. hair. That is That's what I would tell you to do. <laughs> <laughs> that is a preventative yeah, measure. And of course, getting a physical is a preventative measure all within itself, right? Yes. And then for those people who say, oh, it's in my family. It runs yes. in my family. My mother has thin hair my, or if somebody is bald. That means I'm going to be bald. No, it's like any other ailment. When you go to the doctor, they say, do you have cancer that run in your family? Do you have diabetes in your family, right? And that, that is a, like a red flag for them to say, okay, we need to make sure that you're eating well. We need to make sure you're doing these things because it's in your line, right? So that we can change that direction if we deal with it ahead of time. It's the same thing with hair loss. Wow. If you believe that it's in your family line, let's do some things now so that maybe you can change the trajectory of where you think you would be going. All right. Now, I... Now, thank you for saying that. I'm telling people again, with my health connect, your Mm -hmm. hair is, it's a lot of internal things happening with this and we want this gorgeous, beautiful hair. Um, But just to keep it moving though, I would love to hear more about the sister lock. So first of all, uh, excuse my ignorance. What is the difference between when people say, oh, I have sister locks versus people just say, oh, I just want to go get dreads. Sister locks is the only natural hair management system with a certification uh, attached to it. Oh, Dr. Cornwell, um, who is the founder of Sister Locks, uh, what she did was she, when she created this system, okay, she sued the Board of Cosmetology in California. Her practitioners did not have to go to your cosmetology school to get a certification because they could not offer it. She owned it and she had a certification process. So a sister lock practitioner does not have to go to cosmetology school to practice sister locks. Nice. You just have to go get a certification. Mm -hmm. The beauty about sister locks is that shampooing is part of the locking process. It is a vital part of the locking process. And with some um, locking um, techniques, they don't want you to shampoo the hair because they're using, not in the beginning, because they're using some kind of gel beeswax or some kind of agent that is binding the hair together, Mm. um, it together. So if you rinse it out, it's time for that retwist because you rinse in whatever they put so that the hair can lock out. With sister locks, it is an interlocking from the beginning and the shampoo actually helps to um, move the locking process along. Oh. Well, yours are beautiful, by the way. (laughs) 
because we are looking. <laughs> listen, listen. I don't even know my life without them. Now, and I'm not knocking any other technique because they're beautiful too. They mm-hmm. are beautiful. They are doing it up. Um, and um, but. I just so happened to have gotten sister locks and if it works for me, it's been over 20 something years. I don't even know my life without it. And um, it's no limits to what I can do with my hair. That's all right. Well, we definitely want to hear some, some tips about these locks because I would say well, one of my best girls just called me, said she wanted to lock her hair. And she said it's because she's tired of her hair. <laughs> she said she wanted a low maintenance, you know, something that she felt like she wouldn't be manipulating her hair all the time. Okay. So I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe you could. So, so here's the other beauty about sister locks. It, the sister locks are designed the way that they're, um, the way they're parted, the way that you actually start the lock is all based on that person's specific hair characteristics. So my locks don't look like somebody else's locks versus somebody else's locks because it's all based on my particular hair, my curl pattern and and what it does. Right. And so my job as a consultant is just to manage what you already have. Your hair is going to do what it does, even in this natural free state. Okay. so what I mean by that, if the shrinkage is real. The shrinkage is going to be real in the locks too. What? For, for a time period when they first get started. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So oh, I didn't think that. <laughs> yeah. So okay. if, if the hair stand up when the humidity get it or whatever, <laughs> that's what's going to do in the beginning stages. So that's not going to be different. It's just being managed. That's all. Oh, well, how long, how, how long is this beginning stage? Yeah. So it's kind of different, right? It depends on your right. curl pattern. Some oh. uh, hair types lock right away within weeks. Some take six months, some take a year. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it also depends on the client too, how, how well they follow in directions as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay so we can't we can't forget that part <laughs> yeah yeah we are so, interested in you though and your services like what you do because okay. uh and you know i know quite a few folks that love mm-hmm. to do hair one time for all of my uh dc <laughs> high school students that are now on the way to college and one of the young ladies told me that she her side hustle is doing hair Okay. 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 In the dorm. Okay. So we would love to know more about what you do and the services that you offer. So I offer um, a couple of things, uh, several things, actually. So, of course, I told you I'm passionate about sister locks. But Mm -hmm. right now in that area of sister locks, I'm doing more of coaching. I am a trainer. So that brand new person comes to the class, um, primarily here in the Richmond area. I am the trainer for that class to teach from, from the basics on how to do sister lots and how to start your business. But right now I'm passionate about coaching people once they've taken the class to hone, to continue to hone their skills and work with them one-on-one. Um, I, obviously I, I'm a trichologist, so I offer trichological services. I do it primarily virtually. What? So we don't but have to I do also do in person, but primarily oh. virtually. We have now since COVID, right? We've learned how to work <laughs> this thing out, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I've created a system that works and I've been able to see results in where I can work with people virtually. Um, what happens is I send them out a, a dermoscope so they can take pictures of the areas that they're having concern with so I can see the scalp. I have a HIPAA compliant platform that you would then um, load those pictures to along with intake forms. And of course I ask for blood work, right? I need some blood work. Once I have all those things, the pictures, the blood work results and the intake form, then I assess what's going on. And I can tell you what kind of my observation and assessment of what kind of alopecia you have. Oh, wow. And then we could do a treatment plan from there or a wellness plan. I call it a wellness plan. Mm -hmm. And what happens is I send you 
the equipment that you need, the products that you may need, and a recommended regimen, and obviously recommendations for the internal part. And then we meet virtually every couple of weeks. Oh, my God. So I do that primarily virtually, but I also offer um, in-person as well. And that in-person is primarily for people who need a diagnosis. So typically, because I'm a trichologist, that's a paramedical profession, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor, so I cannot um, give you a diagnosis, but I do have um, rapport and partnerships with doctors. Okay. So I do have a way in which you can get a diagnosis. So I do in person for people who need a diagnosis. Okay. Mm-hmm. Some yeah. chronic issues happening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or you need it on pen and paper what it is because um, now um, we know it's internal, right? Yes. So now the medical community is really actually acknowledging this in a real way. And some. Wow. Some uh, insurances will pay for trichological services. What? Mm. Okay. You all need to check your policies <laughs> from yeah. the job. So, so I do Sisolak coaching, mm-hmm. virtual and in-person trichological services. And the way people could reach me is going to my website, which is www.haircares with the S I N C dot com. Or they can email me at info at haircaresinc.com. Oh, I would love, to, love, love, love to partner with people around their hair needs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. You all got another name to add to the list. <laughs> send me messages. Add my name. Put me on there. <laughs> Go to, especially with, with the virtual services that yeah. you offer. And yeah. for those of you who are, are wanting to get uh, more information about Sister Locks, I love the fact that it is a certified system instead yes. of we're just kind to learn and kind of just doing all these other things. And I know it's probably continuing education with that. So that would be amazing. So yeah. thank you so much. Well, you know, you can't leave without giving us uh, some final words that so, you love to share. Yeah. yeah, My final word is, listen, we need to look at our inside, right? We need to get internal. Hair care is self-care. Okay, so if you worry about the the beauty on the outside, we need to work on the beauty in the inside. <laughs> that is the, the real takeaway, I hope, um, that people get from this, is we need to look at what's going on inside. Hair care is self-care. Find out what's going on inside for preventative, or if we have an issue, we really need to get dig deep inside. Let's get to the root cause of the problem. Get to the root. Let's not camouflage it. Let's get to the root cause. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wigs be working out. Listen, and put the wig on and still work on the problem, right? Okay. Okay. We can do that. We can do both. We can do that. <laughs> we can play that thing off and take care of it at the same time. <laughs> okay. It's better. Oh my goodness. Right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I really do. Hey, I, I, I'm feeling like you're a teacher. Because when yeah, you yeah. pulled out, yeah, I you pulled out the hair model. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I was like, wait a minute. We are in class. Where is my pencil? Yes. <laughs> in fact, what I'm doing right now, I, actually, I'm glad you said that because I am in the process of doing the seven part series uh, called Root to Tip. And it really is my story from prior um, prior to getting my sister locks to now. Oh. So I'm, I was sharing some of those pictures. I, I definitely have them readily available because I was sharing some of those pictures and stuff like that too. <laughs> even my hair, even my back? relaxer, even my relaxer days and oh. all that. <laughs> <laughs> go back to the relaxer day. Go back. Yeah. My Tony, look, my Tony Braxton cut. No. <laughs> No. Oh, that's gonna be good. Well, well, well when is Ruth the Tip coming out? When are we gonna it, get I do it on Mondays at 10 a.m. You didn't say this. Time. Okay. 10 a.m. Eastern time, and I am live on Facebook um and also um on YouTube, my YouTube channel, which is Hair Cares Inc. So 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time, live on Facebook. Hair cares, and then also on um, YouTube as well. 
Monday. Okay, Monday. every Monday at 10 o'clock, we can catch huh? you live. And are so you just, if we have hair questions or is it for oh, people yeah, who do hair? Like what? Yes, what? it is for the client and the practitioner. Oh. Come on in, join me, ask me some questions, participate. Let's dialogue. Oh. I am telling my story, but I'm definitely open for um, dialogue for sure. Yes, we would love to see it from room yes, to tip. Yes. And for those room of us who are working. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, so I do a replay at 8 p.m. Eastern time as well. I do Ooh. a replay. So, but you can always go to my YouTube channel and check it out if you didn't see it before. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. You know, because people be needing stuff in real time. That's right. You know? that's right. You're right. Oh, y'all. You're right. Y'all, Dana is available every Monday at 10. Oh, See, she was trying right. at first. See, he was trying to hide. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah from Ruth yeah, to Yeah, please so join me. It's so much fun as I'm going through this journey, uh, just sharing my journey. Yes, please share. Yeah. People want to know. Ooh. That's Ooh. the next. Girl, package it up. So when is the master class? <laughs> <laughs> when when are you holding the class for those of us who are at home try to take care out here when so, are you that? <laughs> now i do have a class um this is for the practitioner okay. remember i was telling you i'm passionate about helping the unlicensed person right yes. that is your cousin you said they want to do hair at her house right yes nothing's wrong with that but let me help you identify if your client might be having hair loss issues so because we are the first first line of defense for that person, you're doing mm. the hair. So if you see something funny, one, you need to know what it is, identify what it is so that you can help your client. And so that's what my class is called, Trico Essentials for Locks. And this is for the hair practitioner who wants to learn more about um, hair loss, how to identify the do's and don'ts. And then how to maintain a clientele with healthy hair and locks. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. Now, see, yeah. you, got, you got a lot going I on. I didn't get y'all my stuff now. I didn't yeah. get y'all my stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got a lot going on. Wait a minute. I got stuff going on, girl. Come oh, on. I was just ready thank for the. You. Thank you, Subbies. Thank you. <laughs>